from WKBW-TV, this is Channel 7 Eyewitness News at 6 with Irv Weinstein, Susan Banks, Tom Jones with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast, and sports with John Murphy. I'm Irv Weinstein, topping Eyewitness News at 6. It took Tom Jones two hours to drive from his suburban Buffalo home to Channel 7. Does that tell you anything about what's happening out there? It is nasty, friends, especially if you're in areas like Hamburg, which is where our Steve Boyd is right now, live and cold. Steve? Irv, the snow is deep, the wind is blowing, and it's causing it all to drift. It's the kind of weather that would make anybody want to retire. The New York State Thruway became the Thomas E. Dewey parking lot for several hours today as this narrow band of heavy snow made treacherous driving conditions from Lackawanna to areas south of Orchard Park in Hamburg. The Orchard Park Road area was very slow today with heavy traffic due in part from people who were diverted off Route 219, which was closed for several hours this afternoon. Route 5 in Hamburg was also slow today, and the heavy snow just kept on coming. In Orchard Park, Todd Heft spent much of his day snowblowing the grounds at the middle school. But as soon as I'm done, I'll be over doing it over again, so. you like it? you hate it? No, I don't mind it at all. I like it. It's Buffalo. Similar story for Orchard Park detective Bob Zeem, wiping the windows clear with the snow covering them up within minutes. Just keeps coming right back. About a, an inch every uh, couple of minutes, it seems. Chris Scott and Margaret Wyman were out walking with Molly today. All three loving the deep but light falling snow. This is the best I think it's been. Yeah, the most beautiful. I'm from this area, moved back from Florida, and I love it. All right, the thruway and the Route 219, which were closed, are now open. Enough about the weather. Here's the news. Irv, every great football team has a great quarterback. Every great news team has a great anchor man. It has been an honor being on your team. And I say with a heavy heart for the very last time, back to you, Irv. Thank you very much for those very warm sentiments on a very cold night. Thank you very much, Steve. Now let's go out to Tom Joes for some of the frigid facts and figures. Thank you very much, Irv. And uh, this is not the, the only area that's getting a little bit of precipitation. It's a whole section of the Northeast, all back through the Great Lakes, all lake effect snow. And of course, this lake effect is going to continue for a while. Here's the stubborn band that wouldn't move for a long time today. Now it's finally showing signs of dropping very slowly, just about a five mile wide band. And soon it will be moving down further into the southern tier. As you can see here, we look down into the southern tier and that system is starting some movement. And that's good news. I'll be back. Okay, thank you very much, Tom. Well, snow or no snow, it is New Year's Eve, friends, and that means first night fun in downtown Buffalo. Eyewitness News reporter Andrew Siff is live with a preview. Andrew? Well, Irv, you're right. There is no snow, although plenty of chill in the air here at first night, but still the crowds should be celebrating when 1999 arrives. Don't try this at home. It takes a half a dozen trained experts from Niagara Mohawk to get the 97 Rock first night ball into its precarious perch. And speaking of precarious, numbing wind chills are testing the will of everyone from sound staff to security to the people dispensing concessions like free coffee. Coffee will be the lifeblood of the 97 Rock ball drop. Why do you say that? Because it'll keep everyone rolling. It's gonna get us all fired up. Anything different uh, about your outfit tonight? <laughs> well, it's a little colder tonight, so we came with everything, all of our equipment. Yeah, we it's came like, prepared. It's like the downtown Eskimo Rangers. <laughs> yeah, we just patrol, try to keep warm, make sure, you know, downtown is intact, make sure everybody's having a good time. In show business, there's a lot of things that you work a lot for one moment. And um, Frank Lloyd Wright, the architect, once said, it only takes a thousand details to make one impression, which are truly words to live by when you're... Um, in the business of presenting things. And you're looking now at a live picture of the 97 Rock Ball, which will, of course, be dropping as the clock strikes midnight tonight. And you know, Steve set the tone, Irv. I should just say that every young reporter needs a good role model. I've had the best in the business, and I thank you for that. And it has been my pleasure to work with you these last couple of years. Reporting live at Roosevelt Square, I'm Andrew Siff, sending it back to you, Irv. I feel the same, Andrew. And 
We'll be sitting in front of a crackling fire tonight, watching you just as the ball is about to drop. Sounds good. Okay. Well, in tonight's Channel 7 Eyewitness News Reel, she's been sentenced to the max. 26-year-old Jennifer White of Lockport will be spending the next 12 and a half to 25 years in prison, following her sentencing in connection with the 1995 death of the infant she was babysitting. A jury convicted White of punching 14-month-old Brandy Klein in the stomach so hard, the infant died of her injuries. Here's proof smoking's hazardous to your health and your possessions. Doyle, two volunteer firefighters tell Eyewitness News a carelessly discarded cigarette set off a blaze that did extensive damage to one apartment in the Liberty Park Manco apartment complex off William Street in Cheektowaga. Luckily, no injuries reported. Well, here's our chance to start the new year with a good deed because of a pending shortage at the blood bank. Local Red Cross blood donation centers will be open New Year's Day to collect pints of the gift of life. Contact your local center. They'll tell you how you can help. And if you can't make it tomorrow, make a New Year's resolution to roll up your sleeve. Call it cooperating for the co-op. Buffalo's University Heights community came up with $38,000 to help keep the North Buffalo Food Co-op up and running. The co-op, which features natural and organic foods, had been experiencing some rocky economic times. When the community found out, it just naturally came to the rescue. And when we come back, ah, yes, I remember it well. Earth, we wish you best. And it was nice to know you so many years. And we, we love you. And always got to hope to see you sometimes on Broadway Market. We love you. From WKBW-TV, this is Channel 7 Eyewitness News at 6 with Irv Weinstein, Susan Banks, Tom Jones with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast, and Sports with John Murphy. Well, it's here. After 34 years with WKBW-TV and tens of thousands of news stories, this is Irv's last newscast. Eyewitness News reporter Steve Boyd and photographer Scott McDowell grew up watching Irv, and tonight they bring us Irv's view of some of the most memorable news stories that he's reported. Suddenly the Associated Press wires started clacking away, not printing anything, but just clacking away. I looked at the wire, and there were just three words on the wire. When it finally started printing, it said, Kennedy shot Dallas. Well, it was unbelievable. We, we just couldn't, could not believe it. And then when the word came that uh, the president had in fact died, uh, everyone started sobbing. I still cannot believe that there was a man on the moon. I look up at that thing at night and I see, you know, what most of us imagine as the man in the moon, a little face with dots for eyes and a little mouth. And uh, uh, when those words were spoken, it was absolutely incredible that one of us was on the moon. Every murder is a tragedy, but somehow when it happens to clergymen, men of God, men of peace, I think it had a particularly powerful impact on the people in this area. It was just, just awful to watch, not just for our audience, but as we were reporting it, the people who shot the video, how could they not be affected by seeing these people dedicated to saving lives have their own lives taken so quickly and violently? the most cataclysmic economic event in the modern history of this area. It was an American tragedy. It was a corker, no question about that. Probably the one storm that everyone remembers. There have been other bad storms, 
but nothing quite like the blizzard of 77. There wasn't that much snow that fell, actually, but there was a very stiff wind, and the wind drove that snow into huge drifts. In some areas, the snow reached to the top of telephone poles. It was a story we absolutely, there was no question about whether we were going to cover that story personally and not rely on the networks. And so we went over there. And there I was, schlepping heavy camera equipment up these, this narrow spiral staircase to the top of this wall. I thought I was going to get a heart attack. Going to Auschwitz was a singular event, not just in my professional life, but in my personal life. The feeling as you walk through that camp with the knowledge of what went on there is just unimaginable. If this had happened in the 10th century, it would be incredible. But the fact that it happened in the middle of the 20th century makes it even more incredible. When I talk to people, when I receive correspondence from people, they talk about that they had dinner with me every night, that I was a friend, or they felt I was a friend. And I'm glad that's the highest compliment I think anyone in broadcasting can ever get, that your audience thought you were part of the family. Now, back to you, Irv. Okay, thanks, Tom. We'll be back with your hometown AccuWeather forecast in a moment. I'm afraid yeah. to say it, Clipper, but you had to bring it up. a big goose egg. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, there comes <laughs> There's a bed. <laughs> Needless to say, the temperature is hovering around the zero mark uh, the past few days. The heater on my car has gone out. And while I go out to try and fix it, here's Tom of the weather outside. Better yet, Irv, let me do it for you. I'm very good at starting cars. We'll start the car, and we'll get the heater going for you. <laughs> yeah, long time ago. Now it has been my distinct pleasure and honor to work with the commander for the past 33 years. So, one more time, here's Tom with your AccuWeather forecast. Thomas? Thank you, Irv. Well, it's been quite a day, especially down uh, south of the city. And uh, things will start to improve as we take a look right now at our 6 o'clock information coming in here. It's 18 with a wind chill of 6 below, 18 in the falls in uh, Versailles, uh, Versailles, it is 16. Now, our dew point at this hour comes to 12, 77% humidity, a steady barometer, wind west-southwest at 14, trace of precipitation, just an inch of snow at the airport, come on. Temperatures, well, where you are, they look like this. It's 20 in Alcott right now, 17 in Attica, 20 in East Aurora, in uh, Jamestown at 16, it's Ellicottville with 19, and it's 20 in Arcade. And uh, there's the clouds that kind of covered all of us today, and a good section of clouds out west, too. But before we get to the rest of that, let's take a look at today's high. 20 and 15, high and low. 32 and 19 are the averages, and the records are 62 and minus 4 in 1962. Back to the maps now, and we'll show you again this huge area of lake effect snow, and of course, especially here in the western New York area that we are interested in. And for us with local Doppler radar, this is looking at it live right now, this green heavy uh, band of snow will slowly shift to the south of where it's been sitting almost all day. And down here later tonight in the southern tier, Chautauqua, Cattaraugus, they'll be experiencing probably another 6 to 12 inches, but nothing for first-nighters. Snow totals 23 in Orchard Park, just a trace in Buffalo. Tomorrow's highs in the 20s, and our AccuWeather forecast for tonight goes like this. We have a low temperature down to about 15. Lake effect continuing across Erie County, bringing 2 to 3 inches an hour, and then shifting to the south, west 10 to 20. For tomorrow night, a low temperature of 16, rather tomorrow. Clouds, break of sun and flurries, squall south of the city with additional accumulation, west-northwest at 10 to 20. And tomorrow night, a low temperature of 6. Eh, it's cold with less wind, patchy clouds, north-northeast at 5 to 10. Well, an almanac for tomorrow. We look at sunrise and sunset times coming up here, 746 and 450. Here's that long-range forecast you've been waiting for.
10 tomorrow for the new year, 16 for a high, 6 tomorrow night, 20 on Saturday, 28 on Sunday, 18 on Monday, 20 on Tuesday, 28 on Wednesday, and Thursday, a high of 26. Words tonight, then? Going to be chilly for 1999. Well, I should have probably put this on tape. I hope I can get through it. Irv, you have been an inspiration to me, to members of my family. How honored I have been to work with you, such a gentleman, a great father, a great husband, a great grandfather. And you've been an inspiration to me down through the years. And I just say thank you for the time that we've had working together. I shall never forget it. And as a matter of fact, as I throw it back to you tonight, I have figured uh, in my poor math, it's about 16,781 times I've said now back to you, Irv. And when I get really lonesome and upset or for you, I'm just going to pull out this old T-shirt <laughs> that uh, went around in the 70s. <laughs> you remember that? I think I've got the only one left. <laughs> Good luck on a wonderful retirement, Irv. Thank you, Tom. It's true. The oldies are the goodies. Eyewitness Sports is next. I'm very happy to proclaim Thursday, December 31st, 1998, as Irv Weinstein Day in Erie County. <laughs> Hold that up, thing. Hold that up, thing. Now, in all these years, you thought Murph was taller than I am. Can I do this? Can I finally? <laughs> I can move this chair up? And <laughs> he is. You were absolutely right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Well, let's get on with this. Let's talk I about the I don't have bills. to take out any Kleenex or anything, do I? You're not uh, going to well, say anything. Not yet. Oh, Stick okay. around. This is like being on the last Seinfeld or something. On New Year's Eve, the Bills can reflect on a great regular season with uh, first-year head coach Wade Phillips leading the turnaround. Wade had the best first season of any first-year coach in Bills history. Well, we sat down with Wade Phillips this week to talk about the playoffs and the season that just ended. This team with 10 wins coming up with six wins a year ago, many people think this team has exceeded their expectations. Has this team exceeded your expectations for what you thought you could do this season? Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, you think you're going to win. Uh, you think you can do well, but um, I think you have to be realistic in some ways. I mean, uh, I did say we, we had a 6-10 and 10 team. We didn't have a um, one of those teams from the, from the Super Bowl, so um, I, I knew it was going to be tough, but you know, I hope for good things, and good things worked out. What was the turning point? Was it the 49ers thing? Yeah, I think, I, not, not the game itself, but I just think believing that you could win. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, once that happened, I mean, that, that, but I think it's the belief that you can win is the big, big key. I heard a network commentator say the other day what a courageous decision it was to start Doug Flutie. As you look back on it, did it take some courage to make that call? No, not really. I mean, I, I don't. I don't think there were any other options. I mean, the decision was, though, that to say, hey, he's going to be your starter, and he's going to be the guy that's playing the rest of the year. Um, I think that surprised some people. Uh, I don't know that it's courageous, but I, I would have done the same thing for Rob. I mean, yeah, a guy wins, and, and the team's playing well, and the other guy's hurt for a long time, a long period of time. I think you got to say that guy's a quarterback. I don't know if a coach needs to have sympathy for a player, but do you feel a little bit for Rob in, in the really set of circumstances that happened? He falls out of football, he's out for a month or so. And yeah, I feel for Rob. I mean, I, I just, because he's been frustrated, he wanted to play, he got his opportunity, and then he got hurt, and that wasn't any, any fault of his. But, uh, but he's battled back and done all the right things, and, and it showed up in that game. A guy, I think a guy that would have regressed or uh, had a different attitude would have regressed, and, and Rob didn't do that. No? I really feel good for him uh, that he did that well and that, that uh, you know, he'll get his chance. More from Wade at 11, the AMC wildcard game uh, Saturday at noon, the broadcast 12.30 kickoff. Reuben Brown, Phil Hansen, Thomas Smith, Sean Price, and actives admitted, Irv, all this time you thought Rick, Rick was just on a nine-year vacation, didn't you? Admit it. You he was gone. <laughs> hey, congratulations. Okay. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Appreciate it's been great working okay. with you, Murph. Good luck. And in 40 or 50 years, you can retire, too. <laughs> Thanks. When we come back, farewell, goodbye, ciao, dovidzenia. Best of everything to a great guy from everyone at the Studio Arena Theater and, of course, myself. Finally... Yes, finally. Is there anyone in the Western world who doesn't know that I'm retiring? Well, apparently there is. 
This email arrived on our station manager's computer a couple of days ago. It reads, quote, I noticed on the TV tonight on your channel a logo saying, Remembering Irv. I went to your internet page and there is no mention of your passing. Can you send me information on this? End quote. Well, sir, if you're watching, you'll notice that I appear to be alive, in a manner of speaking anyway. Things have been a bit hectic recently. Now then, for the rest of you, I'd like to answer some questions I've been getting since I announced that I'm retiring. Am I planning to move? No. Am I going to write a book? No. What am I going to do with myself? Well, I'm going to kick off my shoes and goof off, read books, go to the movies weekday afternoons, watch lots of television news, spend quality time with our children and grandchildren, and drive my wife crazy. You know, the usual stuff. <laughs> Seriously though, friends, even though I'll no longer have a day job, I expect that I'll pop up from time to time on television and radio. And I plan to continue taking an active role in the life of our community. Now, it's time to thank some of the people without whom I would not have had the broadcast career that I had. At the top of the list are my wife and children. Their unwavering love, support, encouragement, and honest criticism have always been there during the good times and the not so good times. And a big thank you to a couple of TV station managers who fired me at the dawn of my career. If it wasn't for them, I might now be directing a cooking show in Waterloo, Iowa, or live wrestling in Parkersburg, West Virginia. I'm grateful to all of the Buffalo and Canadian newspaper columnists and radio and TV personalities who in the last few weeks have showered me with the kind of accolades normally reserved for people who break sports records or walk on the moon. None of the past four decades would have happened for me without the owners, management team, and staff of WKBW Radio and Television, who were and are the best in the business. But you, you the viewers, were the key element in whatever success I've achieved. We connected on and off the air, you and me. I can never thank you enough. You made all of my dreams come true. May all of yours come true as well. Thank you, and good night. <laughs>